Good evening, I'm L.A. Steele. Um, to my left is Lila, she'll be co-hosting the program today. And, uh, uh, to, and to her left is Attorney General Richard Blumenthal, and to his left is Ned Sullivan, President of the Scenic Hudson. Um, and uh, we're here today to talk about the uh, St. Lawrence cement plant uh, and a number of um, um, environmental issues that this, uh, this has raised. Um, I'd like to um, start by asking Ned, um, how is the, uh, uh, give us a little bit of a background on this. Uh, we have a great model here and uh, a lot of great graphics. And uh, explain to our viewers uh, exactly what the St. Lawrence plant is and, and what kind of a threat it poses to, uh, to, the, uh, to Connecticut. And then we'll ask Mr. Blumenthal here to, uh, what, uh, what he's doing with about it. And uh, you know, you'll ask that question about the uh, the Lakeville Lake Journal, Journal, absolutely. Yeah, yeah they uh, they kind of messed up big time on on the. <laughs> I don't. I didn't read what it. Did I didn't. I, I, I very we seldom read that. We got a uh, singer songwriter, uh, Natalie Marshall, Merchant. from the Ten Thousand Maniacs. <laughs> right. Yes. Right. She's been great. She's joined the opposition, and we mm -hmm. did a TV. Uh, we've done press conferences and a lot of mm -hmm. radio interviews with her, but they. Um, we were interviewed by KZE recently. Sally Splain. Sally Splain, mm -hmm. right? And it was a great interview, but for up. some reason the reporter was, I guess, new to the story. Mm -hmm. Got it confused. And she just said, "Oh, all that Cena Cutson wants is, you know, to give everybody a chance to be heard on the issue. They're not against the plant." They, <laughs> <don't>. <laughs> they kind of <laughs> mi missed the bottom line. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you know. <laughs> okay. We we sort of we don't go anywhere without uh, you know this yeah. kind of paraphernalia. <laughs> <laughs> this is. Um, not just another cement plant on the Hudson. Right. This is an issue of great concern to people in the Hudson Valley for a number of reasons, but it's also very important to people in Connecticut because of the air quality and other environmental implications of it. This is a massive industrial city that is proposed for the banks of the Hudson River, just 25 miles from the Connecticut border. The project includes uh, a 400-foot preheater and stack that's pictured here in this scale model. It includes uh, 200 or uh, 20 200-foot facilities, uh, as well as this 400-foot structure, and all of this would be on a 300-foot hill. So we've got a structure that is rising 700 feet above the Hudson pumping uh, 20 million pounds of air pollution into the, year ev into the air every year. Wow. The project... Let, let me just interrupt you. What is, what is in that air pollution? What is it that's going into this the is, air? This is burning hazardous waste, uh, uh, correct? Uh, well, going toxic, toxic. to that issue, um, the uh, project as currently proposed doesn't include the burning of hazardous waste. But what the company has done all over the country is get permits to allow them to make cement. Right. Mm -hmm. And then once the dust is settled, so to speak, on the initial permitting, then they go back and they ask for permission to burn hazardous waste. Right. So what we're talking about here is one of the largest hazardous waste incinerators in the country that could be built here. And just to first give you a, a sense of the scale of it, and then I'll come back to the air okay. pollution if I could. What's pictured here is just a 40-acre component of the project. And here you see the Statue of Liberty, to Inside put it in, in scale. Yeah. This is Olana, a beautiful and very important historic structure on, on the Hudson. You can barely see it here because it's so small in scale with this plant. Yeah. The facilities over here are, ex are existing cement plants that it would replace. Mm. So as you can see, this is a massive scale up Huge. of the facility that um, would also include a 1,200 acre mine, an open pit mine with diesel trucks moving uh, earth around with constant uh, blasting. Yeah. It would operate 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It would be connected to the Hudson with a, uh, a two and a half mile conveyor system. 
Um, it would, this, is, this is a uh, picture of downtown Hudson, which has experienced a great renaissance uh, of uh, antique art dealerships. Um, this is a, a city that's taken a hold of its future and right. said, we want to be a positive place to live. We want to have a high quality of life and they don't want a massive industrial city towering above the city. There is light manufacturing here that employs uh, people in, in every class in this city. Uh, in fact, there are two uh, manufacturing right. businesses in this community, both of which are against this plan and have mm -hmm. said so publicly because they feel that with the pollution coming from this, it will impact uh, their ability to manufacture the products that they want to build. This is a shot of, of uh, Olana, Frederick Church's home and studio. Uh, mm -hmm. it's a, a very important 19th century mm -hmm. painter in, in the Hudson River School. And this is a shot of, of the Hudson, the view from Olana. This is visited by hundreds of thousands of people, right. not just from the Hudson well, Valley, but also me, from let Connecticut. Let me just uh, explain to our viewers a second that uh, the, the um, the, the breadth and scope of what of what your group does, the scenic cuts, and that a lot of people probably don't know it, but you're responsible for 30 some odd parks and so on along the Hudson River. That's right. And yeah. uh, you've been in existence for what, 35, 40 About years? About 40 years. Um, right. The Hudson River and the Hudson River Valley have been declared national right. national treasures, really. They've been officially yeah. designated by Congress and the President That's as national heritage area, areas yeah. because of their link to the Revolutionary mm -hmm. War. Right. The Hudson River School of Painters, the ecological beauty. Scenic Hudson has been fighting to preserve that beauty for over mm -hmm. 40 years. We, we fought a massive uh, uh, power plant that was proposed for Storm King. Right. That was con and our, our one of our early victor victories in that fight um, actually is considered the, the dawning of the modern environmental movement. The, the decision that came out of that fight was called the Scenic Hudson decision because it gave citizens the right to be heard right. in court when issues affecting the environment are being debated. And I might just add that yeah. on the issue of citizens' involvement, Scenic Hudson has played a profoundly important role mm. in the coalition that has organized to oppose this plant. What is so impressive about what Scenic Hudson has done and, and this right. coalition is that it has really created a sense of awareness mm. and very justified concern about the immediate health effects right. of this plant, literally in asthma, mm. respiratory Absolutely, problems, yeah. other kinds yeah. of real health hazards that would flow from the particulate matter, mm. from other chemicals that are admitted, and so that kind of concern, I think, is very well justified and expressed by organizations. I agree with you, fully. And, uh, well, but and it, how does how does the uh, pollution from this particular industry or this particular plant differ from, say, the the, the Ohio uh, and the other the other areas that that we, you you uh, are suing? At this well, in a, in a couple of ways, we're suing the Midwestern mm -hmm. coal burning right. power plants. Okay because they emit sulfur dioxide, nitrogen oxide, carbon dioxide that are carried by the prevailing winds right. from Indiana, Ohio, yeah. the southeastern United States to the northeast. It's not just Connecticut, it's all of the northeast. We receive all of their pollution uh. and none of their power. It's not an energy versus environment we, we trade-off for us. We, we get only the pollution and it causes probably 6,000 asthma cases every year in Connecticut, mm -hmm. nearly 200 premature deaths. Mm -hmm. What is different about this plant is that the danger here is especially in the particulate matter, mm -hmm. which is a scientific term mm -hmm. for small particles, almost like soot, right. mm -hmm. except measured not in hundredths of inches, but in microns. And what is counterintuitive about this problem, what is so interesting about it, but also so alarming, is that the smaller the particles, the more dangerous they are. The reason being, the smaller the particles, the more deeply into 
a person's lung, they can go, particularly mm. children's lungs. Yeah. And so particulate matter is one of the great health and, problems. And it must be generally. easier to be carried away in the, in the, in the winds and the, in the trade winds and so on. You had mentioned to me uh, earlier, um, um, uh, last time we met, uh, about that it would, take, it, it would take six hours to reach the banks of the Hudson to Maine. Okay, based on uh, as as the crow flies or as the wind blows. Well, interesting. And uh, and uh, I should mention that um, that Ned was also the uh, uh, well up to what uh, several years ago you were the the commissioner for DEP and the state of Maine, and um, uh, and uh, and being from Maine, I know how strict they are, and in so many ways. And uh, uh, but I uh, I guess what I'm getting at is that that six hours. Is, is is remarkable. I mean that this stack could blow that way and destroy or the lives of so many people in Maine. Okay, much less. I mean, I can imagine what it's doing to Connecticut and to right. Rhode Island, Massachusetts. But well, uh, interestingly, Leo, it was one of um, St. Lawrence Cement's experts speaking to the press who right. who said that people around Hudson shouldn't worry about it because of the high stacks and the fact that it was on the hill that all the pollution would be in Maine in six hours. Mm. Uh, so that was a defense <coughs> for yeah, the plant. That's, that's right. So uh, <laughs> when Governor King uh, of Maine caught wind, wind of that, uh, he fired off a letter to Governor Pataki right. mm -hmm. saying that uh, he was deeply concerned about this because uh, he has been working with the, with the Attorney General right. of, of Connecticut, all, all the Attorney Generals mm. of of the northeastern states and, and with the governors to stop the problem from right. blowing in from the Midwest. Connecticut is very lucky to have uh, Attorney General Blumenthal's mm -hmm. leadership on really this sorry, on yeah. this yeah. issue and we're Thank thrilled. You. He was one of the earliest uh, public officials in any state to speak out about this and he spoke out very forcefully and clearly stating that he was opposed to this that Connecticut is already suffering from the transported air pollution coming right. in from, from New York and, and other states, and that this was totally counterintuitive uh, right. and, and against the efforts that they've all been making collectively to improve air quality I here. Have you got, I know that the, uh, and I, we were gonna talk about this, uh, the, uh, the, the, the Department of uh, Environmental Protection here in this state has not only has ignored this issue and uh, maybe you can well, uh, we have a difference of opinion. The, a different of, difference uh, of opinion. Based on the what? DEP commissioner and I have a difference of opinion as to the health problems that are generated by mm -hmm. this pollution and mm -hmm. he takes a more sanguine, perhaps more optimistic view of it. I think it in fact mm -hmm. is more that he doesn't believe there's sufficient proof of the pollution and there would be proof of it if the plant were built and then we had the yeah, pollution it would be too late, yeah. but it would be too late and my view is that the damage done by this plant will be not only to Salisbury and the surrounding towns mm -hmm. on the border but really to the entire state Absolutely. and we shouldn't be the dumping ground mm -hmm. for particulate matter other chemicals that are emitted by this yeah. plant and Ned put it very well we're not just talking about a single boiler or a very small discrete facility. It's a small city. Yeah, and we're it will be burning this, a lot of this graphic waste. back here that, um, I mean, that, that's a great graphic I meant to, that, mm -hmm. meant to tell you. Uh, they, uh, Scenic Hudson just came up with this, and I mean, that's great. pretty much what it I, I believe it would probably look like, isn't it? Um, you know, yes, with that gray fact, smoke um, coming out of the stack. Well, it would have this, this all these horrible particles. large 400-foot uh, stack. There would actually be 55 emission points, right. 55 different pollution sources within this uh, industrial yeah. facility. And that's not even taking into account the 120 trucks per day yeah. oh, that's, that would that's, be that's right. leaving the plant yeah. and belching black smoke, which includes much of this fine particulate that uh, the Attorney I General is referring to. I need to. to ask you, are there other plants of this scope built in this country? Uh, this would be, by our estimate, the second largest. There's another one in Midlothian, Texas, mm -hmm. that the company has bragged about, and they actually took local officials from the Hudson area, flew them down to Texas, 
and said, this is a model of what we're going to do in the Hudson Valley. We're proud of it, and we think that the, the track record here will demonstrate the benefits. They, right. they said they were going to dramatically in, increase the production capacity of that facility and that they would cut in half the pollution coming from it. Well, just uh, about okay. a month ago, yeah, they sorry, were good. fined uh, over $200,000 for air pollution violations, for failing to operate their pollution control technology. The people in Midlothian, Texas are outraged. They, they mm -hmm. feel they've been betrayed and they feel that this is a company that can't be trusted. And what so, about the health concerns that we've talked about? Is there any data to uh, confirm what we all suspect would happen? Well, the Attorney General was speaking uh, very knowledgeably about fine particle pollution. Mm -hmm. There is virtual consensus in the scientific and medical community that fine particles are one of the most damaging air pollutant uh, contaminants uh, known to man now. They go directly into the human lung, they lodge there, and they cause lung cancer, and they cause uh, a, an acute increase in, in heart attacks. And our coalition has hired one of the leading experts on this issue in the country. Mm -hmm. His name is uh, Dr. George Thurston, and he has written a, a study that documents how chronic exposure to particle pollution over long periods of time causes this acute increase in respiratory mm. and cardiovascular problems. Will these victims have, and they are victims truly, uh, will they have any recourse for their medical problems that are going to occur? Or well, they, are they occurring? May, they, they may have legal recourse, mm -hmm. but their health is damaged mm -hmm. for a long time, perhaps forever. And when you consider that, as, as Ned said quite well, the particles lodge in the lungs, mm -hmm. very often they'll stay there, particularly in children, mm -hmm. where the tolerance may be much less because their lungs are smaller. Right. And the contamination, the particulate matter will stay there. These fine particles are so small that they can't be removed physically, they are in the lungs and they can have very long-term health effects with very little recourse. Well, are we talking about a situation like um, the asbestosis or the tobacco industry where people have um, raised class action suits against companies that have um, done this? You know, I'd prefer to think about this problem as one that we can prevent, not one that we can we mm -hmm. have to worry about that. Seek recourse to compensate victims afterward. And I have no qualms about victims asserting their rights. Mm -hmm. But I think we all have a duty in the public interest, mm -hmm. as does the company, as do New York officials, which right now have a responsibility to deny a license to this plan. Mm -hmm. We all have that responsibility it to take be, action to prevent this uh, kind of thing. Well, I, I would like to see the governor as a convert. Yeah. In this issue. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's and uh, I that's a good don't care. <laughs> that's a good I think very much so, that's sure. Good. Because yeah. this, in my view, with all due yeah. respect, is a black and white issue where mm. there's really no benefit to Connecticut right. mm -hmm. or, for that matter, to the citizens of New York. Right. And just to create the case, make the case mm. to the governor, I think ought to be very powerful and compelling, particularly if we're able to enlist citizens on our side. And in other issues, uh, he has been converted. Right. When I started in opposition to some of the cables and pipelines mm -hmm. to ask you that this, are yeah. planned mm -hmm. or, in one case, laid under the sound mm -hmm. to New York, carrying electricity and natural gas from Connecticut mm -hmm. to Long Island, the governor eventually was persuaded. He became a convert. He supported a moratorium. And my hope is that he will go further and simply do it in time so that we don't have to suffer the very enduring mm. and irreversible consequences, harms exactly. of this plan. What will, um, in, 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 the case of, uh, in the case of the sound, okay, which is a major issue and part of your platform and your campaign, uh, what, what, it, what 
will this do to the to to the sound by having this cable in there? What what will happen there? I mean, putting it 50 feet underground. Um, I've heard a number of things, but what will happen? Actually, what what should we we worry about most? What well, there are, there are all kinds of environmental mm. ramifications. Right. Some of them very difficult to reverse. Mm. Damage to the ecosystem, mm. the aquatic life, shellfish, fin fish. Mm as well as other water quality issues, mm. impacts that may have economic ramifications as well right. to, for example, the navigation channels of, that, yeah. of the ports involved, mm. and simply the fishing industries, recreational industries, mm. when you talk about water quality, and of course to consumers because these cables have the purpose, very simply, of siphoning electricity away from Connecticut to Long Island, where the prices are already 25 percent higher, and where, in effect, we're going to be subsidizing consumers there. Now, I don't have anything against Long Island citizens, no. but I think we've met our burden of creating generating yeah, power. Uh, yeah. We've done our part they really ought to be building their own facilities so we don't right. damage Long Island Sound, mm -hmm. threaten our environment in ways that would be very difficult to repair. You know, we, we learned a lesson. Mm -hmm. We've begun to repair Long Island Sound. The water quality is coming back. The sound now is swimmable again. Yeah. And we shouldn't jeopardize a very fragile and pressu precious resource. I agree. I agree with you. Absolutely. Um, we uh, is there any other is there anything else, uh, Ned, that you might want to s add to to this? Uh, we have about three minutes, I believe, left to the show. Well, just you mentioned uh, the economy, and one of the incredible things about this cement plant mm. is that, according to the company's own information that they submitted to the New York State Department of mm. Environmental Conservation, because they're going to be shutting down one facility and opening up this gigantic new right. one, they're only going to create one new job, one permanent job. Mm. So there's no you know, economic yeah. bang one for job. the environmental one job. loss yeah. Uh, yeah. that we're going to be suffering. The second thing if, is that if, if they do seek permits to burn hazardous waste, and they've told us they, right. they really That's effectively intend for. to do yeah. it, that, that yeah. it's bec one of the reasons that it's coal-fired is because they feel that coal-fired facility is, is, is going to be more effective with hazardous waste. Mm. But if this becomes a hazardous waste incinerator, then trucks are not only going to be leaving the plant with product, be but trucks, tanker trucks, are going to be going on our roads you know, from all directions right. to that plant to bring the hazardous waste there. So we're going to have hazardous waste down, down the be, uh, our oh main God, streets yeah. and from yeah. Salisbury to Winstead to Torrington and, uh, and so forth. Uh, all over the, the region the will be going to this massive industrial horrible. incinerator. Very yeah. scary prospect. Yeah. 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 Now, the, this actual plant, St. Lawrence, they couldn't even build this in, in Switzerland. I That's right. I, I, this is a foreign owned company. company and they couldn't <coughs> get the It would not to, be to permitted in, in Switzerland. Right. And all over the country, this, the sister plants of this facility have terrible track records on the environment. Well, I, I wish you a lot of luck and hope that we can help you with your cause and uh, hope that. Uh, He'll be reelected. <laughs> well, uh, knock on wood. Well, knock well, on we wood. Certainly but hope but let me just say, uh, you know, yeah. going back to your question about what people can do, we're a small state. Connecticut is a small state, and all the communities here really are intimate in the sense mm. that people talk to one another. Right. The most effective means of communication really is to talk to neighbors, friends, coworkers, mm. and involve them really demonstrate to them what's at stake here, which is really our quality of life and health. I agree with you. And it's an important thing, and I hope our viewers get the message about this plant, and I hope they go into your website, take a look for themselves, and pay attention to what you're doing for Connecticut, and well, thank we you. appreciate it very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. And Great thank to be with you. you. <coughs> thank Great you. Thank you. Uh, we mentioned websites. Uh, and we'll have you back. <laughs> we'll put we'll those on at, at the end back. of the show. Okay. Okay. It'll be, your website Definitely. will be up so our viewers can, can see it and write it down. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, and I thank you very much for, uh, for uh, watching tonight. I hope you learned something, and uh, I hope to have these gentlemen back very soon. Thank you and good night.